So good morning, and thank you for waking up so early for this for this paper. Uh, I'm a cultural anthropologist, so my perspective is a little bit different uh, than the architectures. Uh, but I will get closer to architecture from a different way. Uh, the first point is uh, forming meaningful spaces, creating meaningful spaces. I uh, performed my field works uh, amongst uh, ethnic minorities and religious minorities. New religious movement, neo-pagan movement, uh, uh, inner Asian shamans, uh, new age movement, uh, and so on. So I, uh, at my ethnological and cultural anthropological fieldwork uh, were mainly conducted in the, in the Afghanistan and Pakistan border. You will see uh, plenty of uh, pictures from that territory, from inner Asia and, uh, and middle Russia, uh, Siberia, North Scandinavia, and from Carpathian Basin. Uh, the first point, uh, uh, when we start uh, the discussion between cultural anthropology and uh, architecture, is our common denominator, the human body. Uh, the first point, the first base, that forms in my concept, uh, the building construction, is not mud or bricks or stones, but the human body itself, because we form meaningful spaces from, uh, from human body as well. Uh, for example, in this case, circles. Circles uh, we form, uh, in this case, in a Transylvanian village. Uh, uh, this is a new religious movement, uh, uh, um, uh, Christian awakening movement uh, centered around uh, that guy in the middle, uh, a, a vernacular prophet. Uh, who has visions from the heaven and hell and so on. And, uh, and they start to pray, but first they create a space between cultura and natura, divide the profan from the sacred, and they, make the fo they form a circle. Then another two uh, photos. <coughs> the photos are not so good <laughs> because it, they were taken in 1997 uh, in West Nepal, uh, we can see the circles and uh, the stat status uh, in, in the middle, and then the children around, and then in the circle they can set up uh, different positions for elderly women, uh, for children, for the leader, leaders of, or, of the uh, village, and so on. But they form the space uh, from the human body. And the other uh, um, quite basic and elementary form is the line. Of course, uh, you can see uh, the double decker. <laughs> so this is, this is somewhere in England, maybe in London or somehow. Uh, so, um, the Q is one of a, a, um, a nearly universal form how human bodies make lines and form spaces. But not only from living human bodies, but also human bodies from stones. These are their stones making a long line, long line in the, in the Mongolian steppe, and they are covered uh, with uh, their uh, uh, engravings. And uh, some of them, uh, even the head remained. Uh, there are plenty of such. Uh, places uh, in inner Asia, not only in Mongolia, but in Kazakhstan, in the north, uh, west, China, and so on. Uh, they are more than 5,000 years old. And they form lines, uh, ceremonic lines, um, going to probably cemeteries, but in that uh, uh, kurgans, um, uh, graves, nobody found any, any human body, so it is a theory only. Uh, and then the, the square. When from the lines, they, they form uh, squares. Or in other place, they are lines, and they form a square. And in front of the square, there is another position. So we make positions from human body. And the, the triangle. 
These, these are the marrying couples, and the two witnesses, uh, and the, the priest or the government officer or somebody, and they form a triangle. This is also a symbolic space, but is formed from human body. But we can mention several other, other examples from hexagonal and octagonal uh, shapes. And another, <coughs> another point for the dialogue between cultural anthropology and architecture, the shaping the space, how, how we divide cultura and natura. Uh, this is uh, my photo from northwest Pakistan near the Afghanistan border where um, uh, Kovar people, uh, some Kovar communities live in uh, such a community which is based in caves. So the centers are fireplaces and they divide the outside and the inside with uh, dry uh, stone walls. Uh, so this is also a basic form when you, when you make the human territory inside and the focus is uh, the, the fireplace, not in the middle. The, uh, that's why I, I, I don't say the middle, it, the focus. Uh, it depends on, on the uh, environmental circumstances uh, where, where they should put it, actually. And then shaping the nature um, as forming, uh, for example, a, a branched uh, terrace uh, all over Asia, you can see such, uh, such places are more, much more complex from, from Bali to Japan. Uh, but this is in a very harsh area uh, in the Afghan border. Uh, where there is nearly no rain. So they would be desert at all, stone deserts. But they drive um, the melting water from the high mountains from the Karakurum and Himalaya and uh, drive them in small uh, channels uh, to the fields. And that's why it's like a, a, an edge, a line between the cultura and the, uh, and the natura, uh, <coughs> the harsh mountains and the, the, the human uh, <coughs> culture, cultural uh, spaces. And of course, uh, there, are some, there are some farm houses, and uh, this is a small, small village, which is uh, also a good example how to, uh, how to divide these two places. And as I mentioned, uh, the fireplace is the heart uh, of the dwelling place or dwelling houses. But not only the dwelling houses, as we will see, but even the dwelling uh, space, the surroundings, the court uh, and other, other places as well. And this is a remain <coughs> of, an, of a very old, old, uh, a very old house, uh, 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 which has the center, <coughs> the oven, and uh, of course the chimney. And then, and then the house disappeared because of the, the fires, rain, and, and, and the, the climate. Uh, uh, so after the times, only the heart of the building remained, the oven. This uh, picture was taken by Laszlo Kunkovac, an academic from the Hungarian Academy of Arts, uh, who is uh, famous for, for many kind of uh, field works. Uh, uh, in, uh, in Asia and in the Carpathian Basin. <coughs> and one of his, one of his uh, um, uh, uh, renowned uh, field is the vernacular and folk architecture in Hungary. So I will, I will have plenty of, uh, of pictures uh, of him. Gergő, a táskámból, hogyha kivesszük. During the lecture, you can, you can uh, look in uh, one of his books, which is about vernacular architecture. So this is the fireplace, the oven, which is the heart of the dwelling. But we can see other examples where the oven is outside uh, the dwelling house. And this is also a kind of heart. Uh, they orientate uh, the spaces around because as <laughs> <laughs> as even nowadays in the modern houses or in my house, uh, most of our life is, is in, in, in the kitchen and in, 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 the, 
in, in the room where we eat and, 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 and talk and everything. So that is the center of the house, not, not the bedroom or, or, or the so-called living room. Uh, normally, the, most of the life was centered uh, around here. These are other examples where we can see very basic and robust uh, forms and shapes uh, of these, uh, these open-air uh, ovens. Uh, they are also in Hungary in different spaces. So that's why we should tell something about uh, the patterns and uh, the, uh, the inventions. This is a, an everlasting dispute, <laughs> which is more important, the local inventions or, or uh, the diffusion of, of, uh, of, the, of the patterns and so on. I think uh, certainly there is a changing balance uh, between, between the two. Uh, and uh, for example, with these kind of, uh, of uh, ovens, uh, certainly we can make a, a typology and, uh, and, and uh, the diffusion of, uh, of such forms, how, how uh, reached uh, and, and uh, spread all across the, uh, the Hungarian <coughs> plain. Uh, these, are, these are from the Hungarian plain. But there are such most, more, much more elementary or much more basic forms, uh, <laughs> which has only, uh, um, only patterns with cognitive, very, very uh, 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 instinctual uh, uh, forms. Uh, for example, this uh, uh, dog house, uh, um, which is a, a round shape. Uh, and another is a, a, sh um, a shepherd's shelter, uh, a shepherd's hut, uh, which is really very simple. And now we can make an interruption in this argument uh, uh, to show that uh, uh, what is the yurt? The yurt is the most important <coughs> uh, felt make mobile house, or, or somebody call it tent but I think it's not a correct word uh, for it. Uh, uh, the yurt is, uh, is for, for thousands of years, uh, a symbolic dwelling place uh, for equestrian nomads. Equestrian nomads uh, uh, live, uh, started that, that, uh, that bridge between east and west, north and south uh, in Eurasia uh, in, in, the, in the turn of the Bronze Age and Iron Age, so approximately more than 3,000 years ago. But this kind of dwelling, dwelling houses has, has several kind of, several kind of, uh, of uh, types uh, all around, uh, which is... Uh, um, um, uh, in nowadays in Eurasia mostly and, and, and uh, from Mongolia to Kazakhstan and, and even Kalmykia uh, in, 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 in Eastern uh, Europe, uh, which is the only Buddhist uh, country in Europe, uh, Kalmykia. Uh, the interruption, uh, second page is the yurt, has a wooden structure and um, it's very, very stable. Even the strongest wind and even the hardest uh, climate uh, um, cannot affect only the humidity and the rain, which is against it. So when any any equestrian nomads came to the Hungarian uh, to, uh, to to the to the Carpathian basin, uh, Sarmatians, Huns, Avars, uh, Hungarians, and so on, after one or maximum two generations, they left the the yurt because. The Carpathian Basin is much more humid than the Eurasian steppe. The Eurasian steppe has very big uh, 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 temperature differences uh, during the summer and the winter. In the winter there are minus 30, minus 40 degrees centigrade, and they can also <laughs> live in the yurt in minus 40. And then in the summertime, the, min the plus uh, 35 or even plus 40 is not rare. So that's why uh, the yurt is, is, um, is really a, 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 a genius uh, um, option uh, for, for living in the, in, in the, in the, in the steppe. Um, this grassland has, has enormous <laughs> places where they move from, another, from one place to another, but 
uh, in, a, in a very strict order. They don't look for space, uh, places uh, uh, just for, um, uh, for oc occasionally, <laughs> but they know very well that which is this cl clans or, or, or that lineage or, or that tribe's uh, um, uh, territory, where are, the, where are the wells, where are the water uh, sources and supplies. Uh, and uh, sometimes uh, these weather changes uh, uh, cause a difference uh, uh, in, in, in the waters and in, in the, in the uh, natural environment. Uh <coughs> and that's why they had to look very far. Sometimes they travel 1,000 kilometers per year from the summer and the winter dwelling place uh, with thousands of, of horses and ten thousands of sheep and cows. And the yurt, of course, uh, can be carried uh, quite easily there, and it is covered with a woolen felt. And uh, I lived <laughs> in this yurt uh, in this summer for, <laughs> for, for nearly a little bit more, uh, for nearly a, a month uh, in Mongolia with my, with my daughter and, and, and uh, my family. Um, and it was really, really a very good time. Not for me, it, I, I, I tried it <coughs> several times, uh, but, but uh, my daughter also said that uh, this round circle place is, is, is very, very, uh, gives, gives a real home feel. Uh, so the circle, but I started my argumentation uh, from the human body, and the circle in the yurt, and, uh, and of course, uh, the setting, uh, the, the functions and the, the places uh, around. So this is the basic point, I think, uh, for, for architecture as well. And another example, when there is a, uh, <coughs> a stone house in, in North Pakistan, uh, but uh, because they left uh, the, the yurts uh, in the last some decades, but they kept uh, the, the middle opener wooden structure of the yurt, and their house is such like a yurt. As you enter, the, the order of the places are as the yurt. The window is not on the side, but in the middle <laughs> on the roof. And they put symbolically uh, this, um, this uh, uh, round uh, smoke hole of the yurt uh, to, the, to the house. Uh, to the stone, uh, stone house as well. And then uh, we can see several others, other places from that territory in, uh, in Hunza and the Kalash uh, uh, villages. Uh, and this is another, this is another example. Uh, hutches, uh, which for, uh, in, this is in, in, in the Carpathian Basin and, and also from the from the Laszlo Kunkovite book. Uh, these are also round structures uh, and uh, form a very elementary, very basic uh, uh, structure as a, as a uh, uh, like, like the, the bee um, house. These are also small round hutches uh, in the Carpathian uh, basin. And then uh, dove coat. Dove coat uh, has also very, very many kinds of, of uh, the main structural forms. Uh, but we can, we can make uh, uh, regional differences how they build it because of the, <coughs> because of the materials they found uh, around, uh, around the, uh, the village and around uh, the farm. This, this picture. Let's see a little bit uh, closer. This picture I took yesterday <laughs> in, in, uh, in Köveskal, uh, when we saw the washing house. Uh, I went uh, one, one, one uh, street uh, uh, from, the, from the bus, uh, and I found uh, this very, very old wooden uh, dove coat. So, uh, and then uh, I asked uh, the people who live there that, oh, what is that? Ah, that is an old dove coat. We can't, we don't know what to do with that. Do you want it? 
<laughs> so, okay, well, maybe, but, uh, <laughs> but I make a picture, okay? <laughs> that is the first. And then, um, this is from the Hungarian plane. Uh, as you see, there are very robust columns uh, for, for and, and many, 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 many uh, pigeons there. Um, and then the maize, ba maize barns uh, for corns. Uh, the, there are several kinds of maize bars uh, in the Carpathian Basin. Um, the one, one type is where the maize bars itself, the corridor, the fence, uh, of the of the house, this is very typical. Um, so we can find um, such maize bars uh, not only in the Hungarian plain, uh, but in other territories, uh, 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 west and south as well. And then there are another kind, this very robust, uh, nearly megalithic, st strong. It, it, uh, it's not it's not so functional. They don't need so strong. Uh, robust columns uh, in, in the side, but um, uh, somehow they wanted to make it close to their um, visual mother tongue. You. So that's it. That's what it is. The second important thing that one is to shape the nature, uh, forming a human space and humanized space. The other is keeping our our uh, visual or other kind of uh, mother tongue um, within the forms, within the symbols and the, and the patterns as well. Um, these, these kind of maze bars, maze bars also uh, with such very robust uh, uh, columns. And they, they symbolize uh, the wealth of the family as well. If somebody has many chickens and, 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 and many animals, they need <laughs> the supply for the winter months. And then we can see a kaleidoscope uh, of pictures. I, I didn't want to, to put them alone because the, there are so many examples that uh, the, the round circles, the lines, the squares uh, as, a, as, a, as symbols we can find even from cemeteries like uh, in the uh, uh, the upper left uh, uh, picture and in the middle, that is in northwest Pakistan, uh, the Kalash Cemetery uh, with wooden structures. And then um, we can find, for example, this kind of shape, which is a, like a sikurat, like, a, like an old pyramid from the Mesopotamia. With a, uh, uh, in the middle, in the front, uh, there is a very, very long, uh, steep steps, uh, and then uh, some, some uh, like stepping forms uh, uh, form a, a, a square um, ground. Uh, it's like a, like it's very, very similar to the Mesopotamian uh, pyramids. Uh, it is about uh, two thousand years old in in West China, in Xinjiang. Xinjiang is the, uh, was the, um, a very important territory uh, in the Iron Age and, uh, and, uh, um, uh, and during, during the Silk Road uh, period. Uh, really cultural and, 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 uh, and material uh, values transported in that territory very fast. And of course, the patterns of culture as well. But even though, they kept uh, uh, many kind of, uh, of uh, uh, cultural patterns and, and uh, uh, this uh, uh, um, traditional uh, materials and traditional ways of, uh, of decorations. So that's why uh, when we are thinking about uh, vernacular, when we are thinking about patterns and in, uh, innovations and inventions, uh, um, uh, there are two kind of, uh, of uh, uh, the theories. One kind of theory is the diffusion, that uh, uh, all the cultural uh, inventions uh, spread uh, uh, genealogically uh, in a not a linear but like a like a tree uh, way. Uh, that was uh, the symbolic uh, uh, person, uh, Thor Heyerdahl, for example, who wanted to 
uh, prove that uh, the, the pyramids and then other cultural elements, uh, uh, how they transported from from uh, the old world to the new world, to America, and even to Oceania. Oceania. Uh, but now uh, there are there is another uh, uh, theory. Uh, uh, now the, that there are parallel, uh, even uh, based on the based on the uh, uh, cognitive structures and based on the uh, pragmatic, very pragmatic logic based on the materials, the environment, uh, and, the, and the human body. So we have symbols. Uh, we, don't, we don't need uh, very far distinct uh, genealogical uh, migration of patterns. We, we, it is enough to look uh, on ourselves. And uh, from base, from on the base of, uh, of the human body, we can step back to the real elementary uh, cognitive forms of making circles, making lines, uh, and making difference uh, from positions. Uh, uh, and that's why there are many parallel inventions which is seemingly, seemingly uh, connected, but connected from the from the human human kind uh, uh, ourselves. So we can really uh, uh, list many, many more examples how the humanized uh, environment uh, is, is, uh, is transporting. Uh, uh, for example, uh, they shape the nature as uh, roads or fortifications, settlements, dams, dikes, uh, or, 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 or uh, artificial lakes. Uh, it is hard to imagine, but even uh, in the Gobi Desert, uh, in, the, in the border of uh, China and Mongolia, there are huge, hu dozens of, of, of square, square kilometers uh, uh, surface uh, artificial lakes uh, uh, from the Bronze Age and Iron Age. Uh, or for example, in the Carpathian Basin, in the uh, 11th and uh, 12th and 13th century, uh, there were much more artificial lakes than nowadays. There were much more uh, fishing and other activities made by, by, by dams, uh, by, their, by, the, by the village people. And they, they drove um, the water when it's high to special places just to, for, for having supply for the dry months. So this kind of knowledge uh, was not a, an elite, uh, 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 elite and, and very high position architectural knowledge. This was a, a knowledge from, from, the, from, from the vernacular uh, culture and the, and, the, and the ordinary people, because that was the key for their survival. So we should not think about peasant society. We should not think about the old age, the, the old uh, ages. Uh, they has the, that knowledge, which, which was important for their survival. And uh, when, we, when we think about uh, artificial lakes or dikes, uh, um, we can learn uh, from that kind of, uh, of, of, uh, uh, of uh, um, agriculture, because the, uh, those kind of values, which now we have uh, uh, in, in our focus, like uh, uh, sustainability, recycling, and so on. So having material from the surrounding area uh, should, we should use again and, and rebuild again. But uh, we had a, a, a very good example in the Italian direct yesterday. La it was like a, a Lego. Lego from the Celtic ages, then the Roman ages. They, 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 the, 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 the house collapsed. The stones were rebuilt in another kind, another style. And it was, it was, of course, extended with other kind of bricks, and uh, certainly. But some stones remained from the Roman age, from the Celtic age, or from, from the Middle Ages. And they put together again in the 18th century, when, when, when the territory was, was uh, repopulated again. Um, so we always built uh, on this Lego knowledge uh, of, of, uh, of the vernacular. So that's what I wanted to tell. If there is any question, don't hesitate.